welcome. Now I'm out here today in the garden in the beautiful weather. And I'm going to show you around my Mamiya C2. I got this recently from eBay. The slides from the side, the side up. And it is a real beauty. I just kind of like fell in love with it instantly. I've been wanting a medium format camera for like forever really. <laughs> and uh, you know, since I went to university, uh, doing photography as one of the things I did at university. You know, I used the medium format there at the, st at the studio and everything and yeah, it just, it was absolutely beautiful. Let's not get too excited now. <laughs> was my natural reflex to kind of open this up. It's the six year anniversary for PCBY and next month there will be gift giveaways on their site as well as larger coupons and other six year anniversary goodies. Be sure to check them out. PCB Way do high quality custom PCBs, single and double sided, as well as both surface mounted and through hole assembly with a fast delivery service. It's been my dream to kind of have a medium format camera that I could call my own, and this is absolutely gorgeous. You see, I've seen a lot of videos, uh, well, not a lot of videos, but videos out there, like one or two, about uh, the Mamiya C3 and you know the others but not much about the Mamiya C2 here you know it's the earlier one uh, there's I believe there's one video in French and one video in Chinese so I just thought you know let's just do an overall thing because I needed one myself when I first got this I didn't know my way around it I had to explore so I thought you know let's just put a bit of an exploration video out there anyway so then over here you have the film we put the film in and it takes medium format 120 film and I did get confused initially at this point because it says ASA there which means ISO but there's no way to set the ISO um, so I was a bit confused there however I think it's you know it doesn't have its own meter anyway so I don't think it's <laughs> not big of a deal but yeah this is where you put your film I will show you how to load the film later on use this thing here kind of like wind on the film it seems to be like wound so let's begin exploring this beauty shall we all right so the first thing which I keep doing by autom <laughs> automatically doing is um, taking out the viewfinder here which um, there's a good reason why I do that because it's absolutely stunning I'll show you that in detail later on because Right now, there's a lot of sun, there's a lot of sunlight, so you're not going to be able to see that well. And let them delay, position the camera properly. Right, so you have here at the bottom the focus, so it's on both sides, on both sides here, the focus. And this side here, you have the distance information for each, for different lenses. You know, you can put different lenses on here, that's the beauty of this. And on the other side, you have the exposure compensation information here at the bottom as you can see there now initially this unlock lock thing here as you can see here I was wondering what this was for at first I thought it was just to kind of like lock the um, shutter so it doesn't you know expose the film I was right but it's actually nothing it's not just for that you know it's actually more for when you're when you've got film loaded in here but when you want to actually change the lens so seems locked but this is in the unlock position now when you put it in the lock position it frees it up so i'm thinking why is this lock and why is that unlock and then later on i realized that it's actually not for this <laughs> this is not like the primary thought of the lock and unlock here uh, the thought is to change the camera uh, sorry to change the lens of the camera so if you put it on lock it's open and the film would be exposed if you, you know, took the lens out. So what you have to do first is you have to unlock it. Now you're not unlocking this, you're unlocking the actual mechanism to release the lens. That's what the unlock lock is for. So now it's locked, you cannot release that. When you unlock it, it releases that but at the same time covers this. Yeah? So the film doesn't get exposed, the film's protected. So let's take the... So it's a little tough, but then you just do that, and then you just simply lift it off. And you just change your lenses, uh, and you know, just so you know, top le this is for the viewfinder, this is for the actual film exposure. There. So, yeah. 
And that's how you just change lens. It's very simple. Okay, so one thing to make sure of when you have uh, when you change the lens is to take this back into lock mode. Yeah? Lock the lens because it helps you covering the film. I should have uh, done that earlier on. Uh, so I'm gonna edit this piece earlier on just so I don't, you know, confuse people. That's uh, so, all. Yeah. Take this into lock mode. You can actually see something in the viewfinder saying, you know, indicating there's some mechanism indicating that you know there's that it's in unlock mode. So yeah, lock it, lock the this thing so that it frees the, um, the shutter. This here at the side is your shutter release. Everything's kind of done on the lens itself. You have the aperture here, you can see, and your shutter here. Shutter's a little awkward too. Shuttering. So you have one all the way up to 500, or well, one stroke 500, and then you have the bulb. Bulb is basically you put the sh you press the shutter down. It'll stay open for however long you press the shutter down. That's basically what it is. So for long exposures, this thing is to prepare the shutter or to cut the shutter, and then you know the shutter release. You just press it down. And it exposes the film. You saw that flicker there? It's that shutter curtain. Now, once you do that, this is completely manual. You know, it's... You have to wind the film back. Even if you, like, cock the shutter here, and you do that, it doesn't let you. You can actually easily do a second, a double exposure like that. So this doesn't release. What you have to do is you have to press this notch here, and then it releases until... So it's completely manual. It's not like the C3 or the C330. I don't know the models of the Mamiya Flex, the later models. Um, but I know the C3 and the later ones, it automatically does it. It automatically like, you know, this pin here, this thing. It's sort of like built into the shutter. This isn't. So you have to remember to do that. So this is why I was I was trying to work this out watching a video about you know the Mamiya C3 and yeah sure I got some idea of some of the things but is this a little bit different this is manual some of the things here are manual compared to that you know now this is your focus like you can actually do really nice close-ups with this um, but also this is the actual compensation, uh, not compensation, this is the actual distance that you can do. Distance meters, depending on which lens you've put in. So you can, you know, put 180 millimeter in, 135 or 105. And the current one I've got now is 80 millimeter f 2.8. So that's, you know, the best one. I, want, I wanted one like this with um, a narrow depth of field so I can have the nice bokeh effect in the background. I love that. I can say hi to Helix's butt. There you go, he's gone down. <laughs> this is just to show you a bit of the surroundings and scenery here. So you know what you're seeing when I show you the viewfinder. Now, the viewfinder itself is one of the things that attracted me to this camera, as you can see. It's actually stunning. I will just block out the sun here so that you can see. I will adjust the bellows. You can see the adjustment of the bellows there. What it does. It does the fo it, um, effects of focus. You can see the lines there, the, the top two lines there. That is parallax correction. So if you've got like, you know, your exposure, the bellows out, and you've got it in the region of two, then basically here let me show you let's say you you have your bellows right out here now here you have in the region of one and then you have here in the region of two there you can see that's one that's two and that's three the black line there so if you have it in two region of two what you have to do is you have to double your shutter speed you know because to compensate for the light you know the light loss in here so less light goes to the film so on three what you have to do 
is you have to triple the shutter speed. Actually, you have to <laughs> take it a you know a step less so that you know there's more light coming in. That's what I mean. <laughs> Make it a little slower. In other words, if it's on two, what you have to do is if you if you're shooting it on shutter eight, then you know just take it down one step to shutter four. Now, if you're doing a close-up on something like um, this bottle of chili oil, which I have, <laughs> I couldn't find anything else. You see, the background is completely blown out. You know, I like that, actually, the bokeh effect. One thing I've noticed about this is that it's a little inverted. The bottle is actually in real life on that side. So it's sort of, that's just how the, it's because it's reflecting and projecting on this thing. That's why. So yeah, it is a bit confusing like this. Now to focusing that in there, a chili oil bottle. I couldn't find anything else. <laughs> This is going in the realm of two, so what I have to do is half my shutter speed. So, you know, if it's on four, take it on to two. You know, it is example. Not just the shutter compensation, you have to do the parallax compensation here. Because this is a twin lens reflex and the viewfinder is above the actual uh, lens itself, the exposure lens, uh, you have to do comp parallax compensation. So, at the moment, two. Everything below this bottom one, sorry, everything above this bottom one is not going to be on the film. It's going to be everything below that. So you have to sort of lift the camera up. So if you've got, if you're good on a tripod, you have to just like lift the tripod up. Uh, you could get a little, you know, adapter, which you could get, I forgot what it's called for these, but now it's like ridiculously expensive. I've checked. <laughs> so, you know, just like raise it on the tripod, to, you know, match below that line. Now, if you notice on that little scale, if it goes to um, in the three zone, you know, that black, what you need to do is you have to picture an imaginary line through the center and everything above that center line is not going to be, because you know, you're, more, you're closer then. You have to, let's say I move this closer and I have to take the bellows out even further to kind of, okay, I've taken them out fully, but that's too close. <laughs> So if it's, that's a good thing about the Mamiya uh, C C2, you can actually do fairly good close-up macro shots with this. There you go. Do you know the weird thing I'm doing is I'm focusing, I'm not actually looking directly at the viewfinder. I'm looking at the screen at the back of the DSLR, which is looking at the viewfinder. So this is not easy to focus. <laughs> yeah, so do excuse that. So it's very awkward what I'm doing here, but what I have to do is imagine a line throughout the center and then compensate for that and lift the camera enough so that I get it in shot there. That's only a little an annoying niggle with the, um, you know, twin lens reflex TLRs. You know, it's, uh, you don't have this issue with SLRs. Now, what you can do is you have this other little loop here, which helps you. That does not help because it kind of... It helps you with your eye, but with a DSLR in front of it, it does not help you <laughs> so much. So let me just... No, it's focusing on the reflection here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to manual focus my DSLR. So you're just going to have to take my word for it here that it helps. <laughs> it really does, actually, because it brings that... When you actually look through it, it brings that, you know, into, it focuses on in on it so you can like focus the actual um, image properly uh, of course on the DSLR I couldn't show you it just did not work <laughs> you know, I was just confused with the actual lenses that were on there so you know it's not gonna work you can have a little mechanical shutter which kind of like makes things easier it if you've got this on the tripod it stops it from wobbling so much so you know it, you just have it remotely so with that you connect it just here there's a screw thread so you're just gonna... Oops. Because all this, actually all this is, is just a wire, <laughs> basically. It just pushes it. And it, it's amazing how much of a difference it makes. So let's like, I'll cock the shutter here. Yeah. And you can either do the normal way here, which would, you know, it shake the camera more, or you could just 
which you know you, you don't have direct contact with the camera so you don't have a chance of wobbling it so that's the good thing about this thing but this i'm looking at the um the number of shots here and it is kind of you have to take it without red dot there i'm going to show you how to um load some film in here and hopefully get it right myself okay that's the red dot it doesn't stop it it just keeps going Okay, so what I have here is my medium format films and, you know, of course, these are 35mm, they're not going to work. Uh, this one is not, this one's that cartridge. I've showed you these in the last video anyway. So, um, yeah. I decided to get to, which, there's some upstairs I have, which I, I need to kind of put them in the fridge actually, put them in here. Uh, I need to sort through my films. Anyway, uh, these are two Fujicolor Pro 400H ones. Uh, 120s. I cannot wait to look for, look, looking forward to trying these. Uh, this is definitely looking forward to trying this one. This is a, a trans color transparency or color slide film. Uh, I remember at uni showed, shooting uh, through a Mamiya. It's a Mamiya SLR, but like a medium format SLR. Uh, shooting a color transparency slide through there. And uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. That's why I'm really looking forward to the transparency slides. Now, I came across this uh, Lomography film. I'm not sure what it's like. The packaging is what attracted me. It's just really nice. And, uh, you know, I'm tempted to get more of this to try it out. You know, the 35 mil or any other types like this. Uh, this is three, a pack of three medium format ones. Um, I do have some medium format black and white ones actually you know, on their way because I do want to shoot some black and white with this um, C2 as well. So you got three rolls of this, which I'm, you know, if the box is anything to go by, I'm pretty looking forward to it. It's one thing with me, I do love black and white. Black and white just like conveys emotion and feeling and some depth, but the color is beautiful. I love color, like vivid colors like this it just i don't know it just brings life and brings happiness it kind of just brings different feelings to me now this is one black and white roll of um 120 film medium format film and this is from the attic i think it's from like 2004 or something's ill ill for the fp4 it's probably expired and cooked up there baked up there and frozen at the same time in winter <laughs> so it's like i don't know what this is gonna come out like probably really bad but you know that's the beauty of it you know so this is the film i'm gonna try in that camera first uh, because i've just i don't know i've never tried any film in that first actually i'm gonna load this up today so this is from my uni days you know i still have a couple of these left over i haven't loaded any film since uni day so <laughs> it's been a while I'm talking about yeah 20 years now <laughs> my goodness has it really been that long anyway um yeah, FP4 plus Ilford. Let's put this in, shall we? No, then. Who is texting me? Okay. So, first thing we need to do actually is these notches here. Pull them out and turn them a bit. So this, oops, not like that. A little bit more. So they stay out. So you get the film here, you put the, the bottom bit here, into that notch there. Put it there, push it in, and then just release this thing here. And then it should freely roll in there. And what you do here, you should have a take-up spool here. It's similar to cassette, right? <laughs> you should already have a take-up spool here. And this should be... This should go feed inside there. It sort of does remind me of a reel the reel. <laughs> okay. Okay, so just make sure it's taut. Now you'll see two red dots here. Yeah? That's where you align. There you go. That's what I meant. You align this with the red dots. Here, you can see that red dot there. 
red dot here, and then you have that. And that's it. Making sure this is taut. Not too much, but somewhat. And that shows you that there's some film in there. Little red window. As you can see here, you wind it until that one hits there. Yeah. Until you get the one. Because there's a marker there. See that arrow? That black thing. So, the one has to go there. And it'll automatically stop. The mechanism will stop it there. There we go. That's it. Now you're ready to take your shot. Now then. Oh, hello. He looks just game. There you go, he's here. Wanting to see what all the commotion's about. <laughs> just as I watch some film, he comes up. Do you want to hint something? <laughs> I just came up here to smell my tubs of film. <laughs> so actually, that is sad. However, one thing to remind you here is um, at this stage, I hope you're not being like going on about it and then realize you don't have a light meter, um, is that you do need a light meter for this because there's no metering. So what you have to do is, I mean, what I have is one of these from Unides. I've got a psychotic light meter. And um, you just basically just whatever you're shooting. Oops. See, that's the thing about photography. You sort of gauge it. So this is why I put the worst film in first. So if I like make any mistakes or anything like this, I can just like learn from that. And I haven't ruined a perfectly good, high quality film. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, of course, Ilford FP4 is not a bad film. It's just been in the attic for like 20 years, <laughs> you know, so that's why. And it's been, in the winter, it's been freezing up there, in, which is actually fine. But in the summer, it's been baking up there. So yeah, it's probably not in the best of shape. <laughs> so let's kind of like take a first shot at least. Hopefully this shot comes out good. Oh, that's good in the viewfinder. I gotta show you the viewfinder, even though it's a pain showing you. But I have to show you because it's gorgeous. <laughs> look at that, how beautiful that is. The camera actually doesn't do it justice. You have to look in, have to look in person, how this looks. Now this is the reason why I bought slide film because it just looks this amazing, and I wanted to capture this. I'm assuming that the film is ISO four. It doesn't have it written on it. Right. Oh. Isn't it? Obviously, it's rubbed off from uh, baking in the attic that long. Cut the shutter. First ever shot with this camera. My first medium format in like 20 medium format shot in like 20 years. <laughs> so yeah, be kind when it comes through. Again, you cannot wind the film until you do this, which is just weird. See, that's just a manual step that would normally confuse. And, um, you know, it's what I had to discover. Even watching people with their Mamiya C3s or Mamiya C330s, I think it's 330, you know, all these different Cs. I, you know, they, that, they didn't have to do this part. You know, they just roll it up and wind it on and that's it. So, yeah, this is like an extra step which I have to take. Obviously, it's fine, but it'd be nice to know about it so you don't feel like, oh, did something wrong. Oh, okay. I pressed it again by accident, so I'm gonna have to not wind this on. So after chasing Neelix around in the garden with this, I never actually thought to sort of show taking out the film <laughs> from the camera. So what I want to do is load another film because I want to take more photographs and uh, well Neelix is on his way here now. Now that I've taken the film out and stopped chasing him around, he's here. You troublemaker. Troublemaker. <laughs> 
so that's the actual film and the ISO was 125. I was quite off. <laughs> I did it 320 or something. I'm guessing it. Anyway, I don't want to expose this to light too much. So let's just stick it inside this. But ready to be developed. So what I'm gonna do now is load the camera with another film. This time Fuji color for 400 h Ow! Get away. Nice, beautiful purple here. I wonder what this film is going to be like. One of the things I've chosen different films is to see, you know, what they're like, what the difference is, so forth. You know, which one I like most. Um, in black and white, I always, as I said, I always preferred Fuji Neo Pen. But colored, I'm not sure. Lord in subdued light. This is hardly subdued light. Okay. <laughs> so what I can do here... Hello, nice of you to join us, Neelix. <laughs> To do is actually sit on the other side where it casts a shadow. So we're ready. First shot, what I'm gonna do is take a shot of this one. This flower here. Now this time the ISO is written on this packet. So what I'm gonna do is get the ISO on here first. So ISO set it to 400. And And basically what this dome does is that it takes the direction, the, the uh, light from all of these and, you know, averages it. So it's sort of in the general area. Hi Neelix. When, <laughs> when I'm doing something else, he comes in front of me. When I'm not, he goes and freaking <laughs> runs away from me. Let's take it to 500. Go on. And I think instead of f2.8, let's take it to f4. Because it's kind of an average then. Now also what I'm going to make sure I do is compensate here, so I've got to check what zone I'm in. So I'm in two, so what I have to do is I'll have to compensate. So maybe putting it on the f2.8 is wiser. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the shutter at the moment. Freaking B. What I'm going to do now is cut the shutter already so it doesn't... When I get the perfect shot I can just go for the shutter button. It. Now we wind. Take that in, wind. Next shot. But I want to take this out later on. Take this out to another location and, and kind of do some location shots. I'll be sure to take you along with me. Now since Neelix is settled here, let's give a go on trying to take a color shot of him. I my luck will probably freaking run. Oh, I must had a good shot of him as well. It's the problem for you with cats when you take ages. I got one shot of him, but that would have, that would have been a good shot. <laughs> I would like to say a big thank you to all my patrons for all their support, especially to my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garboot, Camel Tech, Stephen Leary and Chris Sabalinski. Your support makes a huge difference and means a lot.